Hello, everyone. I hope everyone had a very special and meaningful Yom Kippur. Uh, I know it was a very special Yom Kippur for myself. It was wonderful to be able to daven and be with all of you gathered together, both in the main shul uh, and outside in the sukkah area. It was wonderful, inspiring just to be together, davening, uh, almost like uh, the good old days when everything was normal. I want to thank everyone who helped make Yom Kippur uh, so special in this entire season. Uh, there's so many people who contributed in so many ways, contributing, getting ready, so many different details. But in particular, uh, we thank their Gabayim for planning in advance and coordinating everything. Uh, we thank uh, anyone who led davening or blew the shofar for also preparing in advance and uh, inspiring us uh, on the day of davening when we were led by you. Uh, thank you to Jackie Brenner for overseeing 400 uh, seat reservations. Uh, and again, there's so many more people and contributions to list. Thank you to everyone who just came and participated and added uh, to the tefillah. Uh, there are some sukkim in the Torah that clearly captured the mind of our sages of the Midrash that they saw as being very fertile verses to unearth and to discover uh, and to create uh, Torah ideas. And one of those sukkim is the second pasuk in this week's Parsha. The Parsha opens up with the song, Moshe's speech, Ha'azinu ha'shamayim v'adabeira, O listen, uh, O heavens, and I shall speak. V'tishma ha'aretzi free and let the land hear the statements of my mouth. And now, this is the key Pasuk. Ya'arof kamatar likhi, let my teaching descend like rain. Tizal katal imarti, let it flow, my sayings flow like dew. Kisirim ali dasha, like storms on vegetation. Vichir vivim ali asev, and like uh, showers upon the grass. There's an equation between Torah and rain, different kinds of rain, different synonyms for rain or dew or showers, falling upon uh, the ground, falling upon the grass, falling upon different uh, parts of the world that are growing. And the Medrash, the ancient Medrash, the Sifrei, has numerous, numerous teachings from different sages who saw in the comparison and the equation between Torah and, Torah and rain, different ideas. And I share with you just uh, a few of the many, but there are many, many more. First of all, on the most basic level, Kamatar, the Torah is like rain. Mama, Tarchaim, just like rain, is life, brings life. Laolam to the world, after very Torah Chaim, Laolam so too, the words of the Torah are life for the world. We daven of Rosh Yom Kippur for life, for good life, uh, to live life for you, Hashem. The Torah is what gives us life, gives us purpose. Uh, it is the reason for our lives. However, the Medrash uh, continue. Masirim, Yordim al Savim. The storms, the rain falls on the grass. Umalinosam, umagadlinosam. And the grass grow and are stood up straight after the rain. The blades of the grass stand up straight. So too. Kachli Torah, so too the words of the Torah. Umalin lomdeyan, umagadlinosam. Studying the Torah and trying to live a Torah life uh, help us grow and motivate us. They also help us stand up tall to have a sense of purpose and a sense of pride and a sense of joy. Masirim halalu yordim alasavim umenakin osan umeshafshivin osam. The rain does something else, whether it's to uh, trees, to bushes, to grass. The rain comes down, and maybe it is even a little bit forceful, but it cleans off uh, the dirt. Or uh, the worms, the matter says, that may be on, on the branches or on the grass. It, it, it cleans us off. So to the Torah, as we study it, it comes down upon us and uh, it cleans us. It purifies us. It, uh, it removes some of the dirt that we accumulate in life. The matter continues. Ma what is what is the nature of rain? That's Yorid Ali, Lanos, it falls upon trees. Venosein behem matamim lekol echad veechad and helps each tree grow with its unique flavor. Lefi mashehem begefen 
lifi mashahim, bazayis lifi mashahim, bateina lifi mashahu. Whether it's on a grapevine or an olive tree or a fig tree, kach de Torah, kulam acha, so to the Torah, all together is one. There's one unified Torah, but has different flavors. V'yesh beha mikra, u mishnah, halachas, vagados. It has the study of Tanakh and Mishnah, Halacha, um, uh, Agadatas, stories, parables, moral teachings. Kisirim alidesha, masirim halalu yordim alasavim, just like the rain falls on the grass, on different vegetation, on flowers, umalano sun, and cause them to grow. Vyesh mehem yirokim, and some turn out green, vyesh mehem, and there's some flowers that are beautiful red, vyesh mehem shachar, vyesh mehem levanim, and some are dark and some are, are light. Kach Devei Torah, so to Torah, descends upon us. We all study the same, quote-unquote, big Torah, and yet it helps different kinds of people grow in different ways, their own unique beauty. Yesh mehem kesherem, v'yesh mehem chachamim, yesh mehem sadikim, v'yesh mehem chasidim. There's some people that are good and responsible. There's some people that are wise and scholarly and learned. There's some people that are righteous and generous. V'yesh mehem chasidim, there's some people that are pious and are extra careful with the fulfillment of the mitzvahs. So they're all different kinds of wonderful Jews, and uh, we all grow from the reign of the Torah. And yet, after all of these teachings, there's one idea that is not found in the Midrash, that is uh, added by the Vilna Gaon. The Vilna Gaon points out that in the natural world, it is true that rain is a source of life, and rain makes everything grow, and produces ultimately beautiful fruit to eat, beautiful flowers to uh, to look at and to enjoy, but it is also true that rain is what causes the weeds to grow. And so too the Vilna Gaon says, if there unfortunately are weeds in a person's heart, if there are bad mitos, bad personal uh, attributes, character traits, then sometimes the study of the Torah can cause those to grow. Becoming more learned can be a reason for someone to be uh, more haughty or give them ways to... Uh, mock the Torah, or find loopholes, or look down upon others. Just a couple of prokhima ago, the Torah itself gave the mashal that uh, the wicked person is compared to im yeshbachem shoresh porosh vilana. If there's amongst you a person who is like a root of growing gall and wormwood, if that is in a person's heart, then the Torah could possibly make that grow as well. And so, the Vilna Gaon says, before the Torah can help us grow, we first have to uh, remove the stones from the field and pull out the weeds so there are only the good seeds left, and then the Torah will make those seeds grow into something beautiful. Hopefully, a Russian Yom Kippur, for all of us, we've uh, removed some of the weeds in our hearts. We have cleared away uh, the stones in the field, uh, we're ready, we have left with us uh, raw, natural seeds that are ready to grow. So now is the time to grow. We go right into a world of mitzvahs. We're going to have a Shabbos in just a few hours. And we're getting ready for Sukkot. It's a little crazy. We're going to have Sukkot with the Dalad Minim and the Sukkah in just a few days. We'll sing Hallel. So now is the time after Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur to grow. And uh, we shouldn't lose the inspiration that we gain from Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, we should hold on to it and we should uh, use it to motivate ourselves into the year. We should begin the year off well uh, and we should merit to all of these beautiful brachos that are described in the Medrash commenting on the second Pasuk in this week's Parsha. Good Shabbos everyone and Shabbat Shalom.